Hey guys, Modelling Weekly here. Well, it's been a while, and by a while I mean a casual two months. Well, a combination of school and annoyingly hot days here in the UK has been obliterating my mojo up until now, though I've pretty much regained it, so we should be good to go. In today's video, I'll be fully building and painting Eduard's Harristory kit in 172 scale. I really hope you enjoy this one. Upon opening the box, we are greeted with a pretty standard array of contents when it comes to these Eduard Special Edition kits. You of course get both grey and clear plastic parts for two aircraft as this is a dual combo, as well as the instructions, decals, paint masks, resin parts and last but not least, the photo etch parts. Despite the Eduard boxing of this kit, the plastic included was actually manufactured by a smaller Polish brand called Armour Hobby. Upon closer inspection, the surface detail seems to be of a very high standard. There aren't many rivets present, though if you were so inclined then it wouldn't be too hard to pull them off with a rivet maker of some kind. As far as I can see, there is next to no flash around the parts, so overall I'm very impressed. The same goes for the clear sprue. The decals included are of the new style Eduard variety, with the removable cover film once dry. They all seem to be very nicely rendered, with some very vibrant colours which is always nice to see. The resin included in the kit was a nice touch overall. I did however face issues with the main wheels as they were significantly smaller than they were meant to be. I'm not sure what went wrong here. I had to end up using the kit supplied plastic parts which isn't the end of the world. In terms of photo etch there are two frets for each model. One brass and one painted steel. Both are of beautiful quality as you'd expect from Eduard. The build began, just like usual, in the cockpit of the aircraft. I started by putting together a few bits of photo etch for which I used household CA glue. I then moved on to laying down some interior colour, which in this case was Mr. Colour 364, aircraft grey-green. This was applied to various elements, including the fuselage side walls. It was then time for some bare metal finishes. These were present on both the seat as well as below the headrest and on various other parts. For this I used my trusty pot of Mr. Color Super Metallic SM201, also known as Super Fine Silver. I thought I'd just take this moment to put out a big thanks to my channel members here on YouTube. Your next level support helps so much more than you could ever imagine and I'm eternally grateful for it. If you're interested in what becoming a channel member entails, feel free to hit the join button down below for more info. Anyway, back to the video. With the main interior colours laid down, it was time for some coloured photo etch. This included the seat belts and instrument panel. These were carefully applied with tweezers and super glue, then bent into shape once the glue had hardened to a good level. Annoyingly, the painted sidewall photo etch was of a slightly different shade to the interior colour I used, though this wasn't a huge issue as they blended in nicely with basic Tamiya pin wash. Excess was cleaned up later with a white spirit dampened brush and cotton buds. So that's all the painting and weathering done for the interior, so time to assemble this thing. First in were the structural aluminium sidewall elements, followed by the seat and instrument panel. The 
The instrument panel proved to be a bit of a pain, not fitting too well due to the layers of photo etch placed on top of it. With some careful sanding and modification, however, it ended up fitting perfectly well inside the fuselage. With the fuselage half sealed, it was time to work on the undercarriage bays. These first needed a bit of photo etch attention in the form of some securing straps and hinges. These were again fixed with CA glue. The floor of the gear bays, so to speak, was made entirely from photo etch, which was a really nice touch in the end as it added a lot of really nice detail. The same SM201 Mr. Color paint from earlier was used again here, without a primer, as I didn't really feel the need for it. I didn't want it to be highly reflective, and its coverage properties meant that the brass photo etch wasn't an issue for it. A basic Tamiya pin wash was used to polish off the undercarriage, ready for assembly with the main fuselage. Assembly of the rest of the aircraft was fairly straightforward with only a handful of control surfaces and air intakes left to fix on. Overall, the fit of the model was perfectly reasonable, with hardly any gaps present along the seam and joint lines. However, they weren't entirely invisible, so as a result I made use of some Tamiya grey putty and various grades of sanding sponge in order to get rid of them. All this sanding took its toll however, so any surface detail that was lost was simply re-scribed using a trumpeter scribing tool. Tamiya extra thin cement was used afterwards to smoothen out the harshly re-scribed detail. I then masked up the canopy with the kit supplied masks, glued it on and sprayed over an initial coat of interior green so that it would appear the struts were of this colour on the inside. Now onto the priming. The primer used for this kit is one of my favourites, Mr Mahogany Surfacer 1000. This provided a nice starting colour for the camouflage that would adorn this aircraft. In terms of thinning ratios, mine was roughly three parts thinner for every one part primer, however this isn't completely exact as I normally do it by eye for an experience. It was then onto a very basic mottling stage. Using AK Real Colour White, I added some marbling in between the panel lines of the aircraft, which would provide a nice base level of colour modulation once the main colours have been applied. In order to pick out the ribbing detail in the fabric areas of the aircraft, I used thin strips of masking tape to highlight only the peaks of the ridges, producing a ribbed effect in the end.
Now onto some proper camouflage. The underside was given a fairly translucent once over with AKRC Blue Azure, which is my favourite colour to use for this purpose. Everything else I've tried has either been too blue or too dark. Some basic highlights were then picked out by adding a touch of white to the mix and spraying the new mixture into the centres of the panels. I again went for a mottled approach when doing this, enhancing the marbled white effect that I added beforehand. Now onto the two-tone main camouflage. I began with a lighter shade of the two, RAF Middle Stone, which was sprayed in the same fashion as with the underside, whilst also attempting to keep it restricted to only the areas where it would be visible afterwards. This helped to prevent obscuring the marbling layer where it wasn't necessary. With all that done, I did the same exact thing I did for the underside. I added a drop or two of the white to the mix and added some highlights to the middle stone. These again were restricted to the centres of the surface panels. After a bit of masking using both masking tape and AK masking putty, the second tone, REF Dark Earth, was ready to be applied. This again was applied in the exact same fashion as before, including a highlight coat afterwards which I didn't film as it was very repetitive. This particular desert scheme featured some nice mottling along the leading edges of the wings and this was created on a light tan base, so I first sprayed a layer of Mr. Colour Aqueous Sail Colour. The mottling itself was pulled off with AKRC RAF Dark Green, which is normally featured on the standard two-tone version of the aircraft. It wasn't the easiest process ever, as the room for error was so small, though with a bit of work I'd say I got a satisfactory result. Not amazing, but it'll do. The red warning panels around the eight machine guns were then masked off and sprayed with Tamiya XF7. In hindsight, I really should have put down a coat of yellow or white beforehand so that the red would be brighter and richer, though it didn't turn out terribly in the end. Following a rust colour being applied to the exhaust stacks, a thick coat of GX100 gloss was applied, providing a perfect layer for decal application. The decals were applied in my usual manner, making use of both micro set and sole to achieve a nice end result.
After peeling up the carrier film from the decals, the model was made ready for weathering via the application of a coat of GX114 clear matte varnish. The first bit of weathering that I decided to lay down was a basic pin wash, homemade from white spirit and the combination of sepia and black oil paint. Any excess was either simply blended in with white spirit or rubbed away completely with a paper towel or cotton bud. Now let's do some streaks and stains. All of these were done in a dry blended fashion by simply applying a dab of paint to the surface and streaking with a soft brush. I began this process at the machine guns and then move on to areas such as vents or spent munition ejection holes. Now time for some exhaust smoke. This effect was built up over a few different layers, so here's the process I used. I began with a lighter smoke stain mixture that I created by eye, which was used to outline the general area that the stains would sit. Then, once this was done, I used a darker mixture to make the stains appear more intense towards their centres. I'd say it turned out alright in the end. A bit of basic chipping was then applied using the same super fine silver Mr. Colour paint as before, this time using a very fine brush. Everything was then sealed in a final time with a final coat of GX114 matte varnish, which essentially completed the bulk of the model. All that was left to do now was remove the canopy masks and add any smaller details that weren't included before. These landing lights were a bit of a squeeze to get in, though they worked out okay in the end. A chrome marker pen was used to make them appear as if they actually had bulbs behind them. As mentioned previously, the wheels seen here are of the plastic variety due to the unfortunate mistake in the moulding of the resin replacements. A final touch before adding the prop was a spattering of dry earth enamel effects onto the underside as this would help to simulate the conditions that the aircraft would be operating in. With the prop added, I called the model complete. This little kit was definitely a lot of fun to create and it was a really nice breather from some bigger projects that I have going on at the same time. The overall quality of this kit was definitely admirable coming from such a small company and the Eduard Extras were of course a godsend in a lot of aspects. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how the finish has turned out. There are a few areas where the paint hasn't worked out as effectively as I had hoped, but for a project that I never intended to be anything properly special, I'm relatively happy with it. Let me know what you think down below, I'd be intrigued to hear. Well, that's it for today's video. Just so for my subscribers know, I'll be on holiday for a couple of weeks at the time this video is posted, though don't worry as I already have another video lined up for the week after this one is released. So that's it for today, if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like, and I hope to see you all here next time. Bye!